So the next section we're going to be talking about in trigonometry is going to be taking advantage of complementary angles. We're going to use it to understand the concept of co-ratios or cofactors. At the end of this, you have a better understanding of how it works and how to answer questions regarding it. So to understand complementary ratios, the first thing you have to understand is what complementary angles are. Complementary angles is a sum of angles that add up to 90 degrees. And that's exactly what we're going to be playing around to help us understand how complementary ratio works. The concept of complementary ratio is you making sign into cos or you making cos into sign. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about. So this first section we're going to go over is going to explain the basics. So to understand how to use co-functions or co-ratios, as we said before, it is important to understand complementary angles. Now, the concept of complementary angles is you changing from cos into sine or you changing from sine into cos. Now, to be able to do this, one thing you first of all need to understand, like we've talked about in reduction formula and other sections and trig, is that theta is an acute angle. So therefore, theta is less than 90 because it's in the first quadrant, as we know. Able to change from sine to cos. We say that sine of 90 minus theta becomes cos theta. So does cos of 90 minus theta also become sine theta. Sine and cos are both positive in the first quadrant. Now another way you could change sine into cos is when you have 90 plus theta. Now 90 plus theta is in the second quadrant. So if I do have sine 90 plus theta, since sine is positive, in the second quadrant, we understand that the value that we'll get here would be a positive cos theta. Yeah, it is due to the fact that sine is positive in the second quadrant. However, when you have cos 90 plus theta, the value that you will get here will be negative sine theta. And the reason for that is because of cos. Cos is negative in the second quadrant. So that is reflected in the answer that you're going to get when it is 90 plus theta. Another way you could change from sine to cos is also this, theta minus 90. Now remember, as we said, theta is less than 90, is in the first quadrant. So the final answer I'm going to get here will be negative. And this here reminds us of the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, we know that sine is negative in the, in the fourth quadrant. So the equivalent value I'm going to get would be negative cos theta. However, for cos, we understand that cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. And therefore, the equivalent value would expect this to be. And that's it. If there's a recurring trend, you'll notice that they all have 90 in every single one of them. So the way you change from sine to cos or you change from cos to sine is when you notice there is a 90 in your formula. So these are the important things you need to remember. To be honest, you more or less use, this is, I'll call this number one, that's the one you use the most, followed by this, and you hardly use this, but you sometimes get it in question. Now that you have a better understanding of how complementary ratio work, it is important for you to know how to use this in question. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be doing an example to explain this. So let us try out an example of co-functions in context of reduction formula. So we have something like this and we are asked to simplify this. Breaking everything down, the first thing we notice in this here is this. This here reminds you of the second quadrant, of the positive quadrant. Yeah, that's where it is. And cos in the second quadrant, as we know, is negative. So this here would be negative cos theta times. We go to this one over here. 
This is 90 minus theta. This is in the first quadrant of what we just talked about right now. And we know that when you change cos to sine because of the 90, we just have it as sine theta. All this over. Then you have this here sine 90 plus theta. Now remember, 90 plus theta is in the second quadrant. And sine is positive in the second quadrant. But whenever you see 90, it automatically changes into cos. So for that reason, I understand this here will just be cos theta. And finally, I have sine negative theta negative 180. We understand that this here is also in the second quadrant of the negative angle. And as you know, sine is positive in the second quadrant. So this here can just be written as sine theta. So from here, I notice that I could cross cancel. I have multiplication here and I have a division sign. So therefore, as you can see, this here can cross cancel that and this here can cross cancel that. So from here, all we are left with is just negative. And since there's no other value, we just write it as negative one. And that will be your answer. So this is an application of co-ratios. Using co-ratios while you also reduce, okay? So as you know, we've talked about how to change from sine to cos. That whenever you see 90, you would change it. So what happens when you have actual values? So if I want to change something like sine 50, and I want to make this into cos something, what we need to understand from what we learned up there is that we need to rewrite 50 in terms of, and these are our choices, we need to rewrite it in terms of 90 minus theta, 90 plus theta, or theta minus 90. If we can write it in any of this, we can automatically change it to cos. If you're wondering which of these three do I use, whenever you're working with values in the first quadrant, we use this. Whenever you're working with values in the second quadrant, we use this. And whenever you're working with negative values, which happens to be in the fourth quadrant, you will definitely use this one over here. And I would explain, especially the last one, I'll explain what I mean by that in one example. I mean, let's go back to this. We have sine 50 to cos something. What do we do? We write this, since 50 is in the first quadrant, we write it as sine 90 minus 40. And as you know, 90 minus 40 gives you 50. And therefore, the answer of this would just be cos 40. That's it. What of if I have something like cos 150 and I need to make it in terms of sine? What in the world do I do? Same story. Look at this. This is in the second quadrant. So I rewrite it in terms of that. So this would become cos 90 plus 60 because 90 plus 60 gives you 150 and therefore from what we talked about since cos is negative in the second quadrant my answer here will be negative sine 60 is the exact same answer as i have over there the last one which looks a little bit complicated let's say you do have something like this you have sine negative 43 how exactly do you change this into cos which is negative theta this is in our fourth quadrant for the negative angles 47 minus 90 as you can see it it looks more or less like that theta minus 90 so if i say this 47 minus 90 it gives you that there negative 43 so from what we talked about before sine is what negative in the fourth quadrant right so for that answer it affects our choice this will just be written as negative cos 47 degrees so this is exactly how you rewrite your values in terms of these three formulas 90 minus theta 90 plus theta and theta minus 90. It's in the first quadrant we use the first one it's in the second quadrant we use the second one if it's in the fourth quadrant we use that one over there. And that's exactly, this is a perfect example of how it works. So let us try out an examinable type of question. Now, one thing you need to understand about this question, you are going to use the concepts you've learned in reduction formula to answer it. And also some of the concepts you learned 
in complementary ratio. Now, one thing you need to put at the back of your mind is that whenever you get questions like this, sometimes you'll be given choices. And there are two parts you can take in answering the question. The first part may be you just doing normal reduction, while the second part could take you in the line of complementary angles, you converting from sine to cos using all the methods we talked about before. Now, you knowing which one to choose is exactly what we're going to be talking about in this example. Okay, so we have this question here that we're trying to simplify. This question here tells us sine 315 tan 210 sine 190 over cos 100 sine 120. We are going to reduce this. So the reduction of this would be this is because 3, 315 is in the fourth quadrant, and this is 210 is in the third quadrant, so, and this one here is 190 is in the third quadrant, that's also rewritten in the third quadrant. Then we have cos 100, and there are two things we notice about cos 100. Now, cos 100 can be rewritten as because it's in the second quadrant. And it could also be written as this, because that's a co-function. Now, the reason why I'm thinking of this specifically is because of that up here, we have sine 180 plus 10. And I'm thinking that if I write 90 plus 10, I will be able to change cos into sine, which will help my next step, which can actually cross cancel. Yeah, because sine 10 and sine 10 would be able to cancel themselves out. I'm going to write it as, and this here is because 120 is in the second quadrant. Then from there, we just finally reduce them, assign each of the sign for the quadrants. This here will be written as sine negative in the fourth quadrant, tan positive in the third quadrant, sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. Cos is negative in the second quadrant, so therefore, in that turn, sine would also be negative here. And sine is positive in the second quadrant. So you can see that we making this 90 plus 10 pays off in this step over here. Because in this step here, we are definitely allowed to just cross cancel this negative sine 10 and also cross cancel that negative sine 10. Then we can now simplify the rest. These are all special angles, so it should not be so much of a problem. So this can be written as... And that exactly will be your final answer. This is exactly how they wanted you to simplify this sort of questions. So one thing to take away from all this is that whenever you have a question that there's a possibility of using co-function, always look at both choices side by side and see which one is going to pay off in the next step. And that's it. I hope you guys had a better understanding of how complementary ratios or co-ratios, co-factors, whatever you want to call it, how it works. The next section, we're going to be talking about grade 11 identity. You guys can actually check out the video. It's going to come out very soon. For other videos on Trig, you can check out the description. On your way out, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.